Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can you all hear me? Firstly, let me thank uh, uh, Dr. Maruf for inviting me to speak on this topic on how can HIFU help infertility patients with fibroids and adenomyosis. Now, I have been doing uh, HIFU since uh, 12th of July, 2021, and this is the number of cases that I've done so far. I've done 316 cases, out of which uh, 185 are fibroids, 114 are adenomyosis, and 17 adenomyosis and fibroid. And uh, actually, we are running a workshop now, an international workshop now, and there are about uh, 26 doctors from all around the world coming, uh, staying with me to learn uh, HIFU, and it is organized by the makers of the HIFU machine from Chongqing, China. Now, um, what is HIFU? Now, this is a brief uh, video showing what HIFU is. An, An ultrasound, ultrasound beam can, can be brought, brought to a tight, tight focus, focus at a distance, distance from, from the source, source. With, with sufficient, sufficient energy, energy concentrated, concentrated within the focus. The cells, the cells lying within, within will be killed without, without damaging, damaging the surrounding tissues. tissues. Intensity focused ultrasound, IFU, is therefore a non invasive method of producing selective and trackless destruction of deeply seated tissue targets within the body without causing any damage to the overlying surrounding tissue. Okay, so that, that is a little bit on HIFU. Since we are in time constraint, I'll move on straight to my topic, which is how HIFU can help infertility patients with fibroids and adenomyosis. Now, I'll first talk about fibroids. Now, these are the ways in which I think HIFU will help uh, patients, uh, infertile patients uh, with fibroids. Now, let's look at it one at a time. First is patients who are at risk of surgery. Now, I can give you an example. This is just a case that we did this week. Uh, last week, which is a 40-year-old lady, para 1, last childbirth seven years ago, she had heavy blood flow with clots and severe dysmenorrhea. She had a paralysis of her right arm because of an accident. In 2008, she had a major accident in the abdomen and the abdomen was, uh, 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 there was a lot of injury into the abdomen. Subsequently, she conceived and delivered a baby by caesarean cesare section in 2015. She also had a, a perforated appendix at nine years of age. She's a diabetic, hypertensive, asthmatic. She had a lot of blood transition because of the anemia. And uh, on examination, the uterus was 16 week size and there was a large anterior submucous fibroid measuring 10 by 10 by 11 centimeters. And this is her abdomen. Yeah, she had a long incision and nobody was daring enough to go in to uh, remove the fibroid. So they sent, sent to me for HIFU. Now, this is the MRI image. Uh, we call it the T2 MRI image of this uh, fibroid. It's a, it's a, it's a type 2 fib uh, large submucous fibroid. And uh, this is the contrast MRI uh, of this fibroid. The fibroid actually looked quite vascular, so we were very worried whether we could do the ablation uh, of the uh, fibroid. And uh, so we did the ablation about three days ago, and this was the final outcome of the uh, after the ablation, and you see that the fibroid has been ablated. When, it's, when the fiber is ablated on contrast MRI, it will look dark, which means there's no blood flowing into it. So we can now wait for the fiber to regress and hopefully she can conceive. So this may be one uh, good indication for doing uh, um, high food for fibroids. Now let's look at the second option, patient with previous myomectomy. Now uh, we get patients who have myomectomy and then the fibroids recurs. And uh, we wonder whether we should go in and do another second myomectomy for this kind of patient. That HIFU may be a, sec a good choice for this kind of patient. I'll give you an example. This is a lady that we also did HIFU just a few days ago. This patient had a myomectomy last year and then the fibroid grew back and she also has a lot of symptoms. And you can see there's a small fibroid behind about five or uh, six centimeters. And uh, it was also a very vascular fibroid. Now, how do we know it's a vascular fibroid? By contrast MRI, it looks white in color. So, so we went ahead and did uh, uh, HIFU for her. And uh, it was difficult, but we managed to ablate the, uh, fib the, the fibroid. And with this, we hope that the fibroid will shrink and then she will be able to conceive. So this may, this may be another um, indication for doing uh, uh, HIFU for fibroids especially in patients who have recurrent, uh, recurrent, uh, uh, recurrence of uh, uh, fibroids. Now, the third, is, third indication is patients with small type 3 and type 4 fibroids. And these are, these are very conf confusing fibroids for fertility specialists like us. 
When you have a fibroid, say of three, four centimeters of maybe type four fibroids or type three fibroids, there has been a lot of studies that says that they actually patients actually can conceive, but many of them will not, and it actually affects their fertility. I've actually did a review on this kind of fibroids, small fibroids, and my topic was intramural fibroid and fertility to operate or not. And I looked at all the pathophysiology for this uh, uh, cause of this fibroid and look at all the options that we have besides going in for surgery. Now, doing a myomectomy for a four centimeter fibroid doesn't seem right. So we look, I looked at all the other options, which is GNRH analog, uterine artery embolization, uh, HIFU, you, even itosiban for uterine peristalsis. And, and looking at everything, HIFU seemed to be a very good option for this kind of patient. I'll give you an example. This is a lady who had IVF and she failed and she has multiple fibroids and the IVF specialist who did uh, IVF for her sent her to me asking me to decide whether I want to do surgery or whether I want to do HIFU. And this is how the fibroids look. She not, didn't have very big fibroids, but they are about four centimeter fibroids and multiple small, small fibroids. So uh, we dis I discussed with the patient whether, you know, we, whether we do, should do lab, uh, surgery or not, and or whether we do HIFU, and she opted to do HIFU. And we did HIFU for her, and, and we managed to ablate almost all the fibroids. And now I'm waiting for the fibroids to regress and when it is uh, when it is smaller in size, say about three to six months, then she can go back for her frozen embryo transfer. So this may be another option for patients who have fibroids uh, and, and who are infertile. Those who have got small fi uh, fibroids but still not getting pregnant or failing IVF, and we what do not feel comfortable to go in and do surgery. Another option is patients with large subserous fibroids. You know we know that subserous fibroids do not affect fertility, but some patients have this kind of fibroids and they are concerned that if they have these fibroids, it will affect them uh, even when they get pregnant. And so this may be, that may be an option instead of going and doing surgery to do uh, HIFU for this kind of patients. The last uh, option is patients with multiple fibroids, something called leomyomatosis. Now this is a big, big problem because when we operate on these patients, before you know it, the fibroid comes back. And so uh, I'm thinking whether they, doing HIFU will be a good option for these kind of patients. And I'll give you an example. This is a lady with uh, multiple fibroids. She's a young girl with uh, really the whole uterus was filled with fibroids. And so again, I discussed with this patient whether we need to go in and try and uh, shell out all these fibroids and repair the uterus or we should do HIFU. And she opted to do HIFU and this is what happened. I did the HIFU, managed to ablate almost all the fibroids, but also was very close to the endometrium. So the endometrium will be partially affected. So I'm waiting for the fibroids to regress and looking at options for her to get uh, to conceive. Now let's move on to the next, which is adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a much more difficult problem than fibroids. Fibroids, we have operations, we can just do surgery and remove the fibroids. But adenomy adenomyosis and adenomyomectomy is a very difficult surgery. And uh, so uh, we see different types of patients with adenomyosis. Those who are not keen to preg get pregnant are the easy ones. The ones who want to get pregnant will be the difficult one. The one that is really difficult are the one who are unsure whether to get pregnant or not. And in the group that was keen to, pregnant, to get pregnant, we have got three groups of patients. One who have frozen embryos, the other who is keen to get, uh, get spontaneous pregnancy, and the patients who are still single who ultimately later want to get pregnant. So let me look at this frozen embryo transfer patients. Those who have frozen embryos uh, uh, first. And I think these are the best patients for a high food treatment for adenomyosis. I'll give you an example. Uh, these kind of patients are usually, I do the ablation very carefully, not to try not to involve the endometrium. Then I'll give them generation analog for three months to stop their menses. And after three months, when the uterus is at its smallest size, I will do an embryo transfer. And I'll do the embryo transfer even without inducing menses. This is the policy that I've, I've adopted. And I'll give you an example of this, uh, this uh, adopting this policy. This is a lady, 35 year old lady, married for five years with no children. She underwent IVF and has got two frozen embryos in 2019 and she was given one dose of GnRH analog. She underwent a laparoscopy in 2020 for cyst endometrioma. She was again given GnRH analog and she, was, she had one embryo transferred in 20, uh, 2021. She did not conceive. So she was sent to me and when I when and she complained of severe dysmenorrhea and heavy menses, she was on transcendomic acid to control the bleeding. 
So examination showed a 16 week size uterus. Ultrasound showed a large posterior adenomyosis of 9 by 10 by 8 centimeters. And this is how the adenomyosis looked. It's a, it's a, it's a large adenomyosis on the right side of the uterus and, uh, uh, and on, on MRI. And when you look at it on, uh, on the uh, axial view, you can see that it is a large adenomyosis completely involving the endometrial cavity. So we performed HIFU for her. And this is the uh, six month later, uh, three months later, this is how the endometrium looked, uh, the, the, the adenomyosis looked. So it was a, it was a fairly good ablation. And uh, so this is, this is the regression of the uterus uh, uh, along the way. When she started off, her uter uterine volume was 940 centimeter cube. At one month, it was 448. At three months, it was 318. And at six months, it was 265. This was one, one of my earlier cases where I'm three, still formulating why, how to deal with these kind of patients. The volume reduction of the uterus was 71.8%. So I sent her back to her 5EF specialist. And our IVF specialist uh, did the uh, embryo transfer. She gave Proganova uh, 2 milligrams three times a day for 11 days and added Eutrogestin and did a frozen embryo transfer on the 25th of June 2022 and she's currently pregnant. So I, we are looking at how to help this kind, this kind of poor patients who have very large adenomyosis instead of them going for adenomyomectomy, whether HIFU will be a better choice for these patients. Next are the patients who are keen to have spontaneous pregnancy. Those who have adenomyosis, but keen to have spontaneous pregnancy. Here, I will again do a careful ablation of the, uh, uh, of the uh, adenomyosis without involvement of the endometrium. I'll give them GnRH for three months, and then if able, if, and then I'll, I'll encourage them to get pregnant. But in this kind of patients, I'll tell them that if they don't get pregnant within six months, they should consider assisted conception because the adenomyosis is going to come back. Now, ablation of adenomyosis is far more difficult than that of fibroids because fibroids has got a capsule and we could ablate almost the fibroid entirely. But for adenomyosis, the, it is all over the place. So we could probably do 60, 70%. So the remaining 30% of the adenomyosis can come back if they don't get pregnant or if they don't take any kind of hormones to suppress it. So that's the reason why I tell them that it is very important for them to consider uh, assisted reproductive techniques if they did not get pregnant within about six months or so. I'll give you an example. This is a lady who had a very large adenomyosis. This uterus was 13.2 cent 13, 13 centimeters by seven centimeters. And we did ablation. This is one day later. We managed to ablate a fair bit of the adenomyosis. And this is at three months. The uterus has shrunk very nicely. Now I'm waiting for her to conceive on her own. So this is the volume of the adenomyosis before. Uh, it's a 396, and this is at three months, which is 178 cent, uh, centimeter cube, a reduction of 55%. So again, I'm uh, uh, anxious whether she will conceive on her own. If she doesn't, she has to either do a repeat uh, HIFU if the adenomyosis comes back, or do IVF. So in conclusion, uh, I've described some of the ways in which I'm using HIFU to help fertility patients, my fertility patients. This is a very new field. The inventors of HIFU did not look at HIFU for infertility. They looked at HIFU for reduction of symptoms and size of the uterus. Uh, for fibroids, it's just shrinking the fibroids and for adenomyosis to reduce menorrhagia and dysmenorrhea. So I'm now looking at how we can utilize HIFU to help uh, my, uh, my infertility patients. Uh, only time will tell whether these strategies that I've described will work uh, on some of the most difficult infertile patients. Thank you. Back to you all.